Hello, my name is Rupert Boyd, and I'm going to begin by playing you a song. And I'm sure it's a song that you've heard before, I'm sure it's a song you probably know, but as I play it, I want you to try and guess what it is called. So, now if any of you thought that that was uh, Baba Black Sheep, you're wrong. Because that's a very similar song, but that's... And what I played is... So, if any of you named Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, you are 100% correct. But, if any of you said it's the alphabet song, A, B, C, D, you're also correct. They're both the same song. So, my name is Rupert Boyd, and I am a classical guitarist. I'm here in my apartment in New York City. You can probably tell, though, from my accent that I'm not from New York City originally. I'm actually from very, very far away, a good 10,000 miles away, a place called Australia. But I've been living in New York City for a long time, about 16 years now. So it's pretty much home these days. So I started playing the classical guitar when I was eight years old. I was doing a music program through my school, and one day they said to me, do you want to play an instrument? And that same day, my brother came home from his high school playing guitar. And so I said, yes, yes, I want to play guitar. So that's how I, I started. As a kid, playing music was something I really enjoyed doing, but it was also just something I did. I also played soccer and I played cricket and I swam in the lake and things like that. Uh, but then when I was a teenager, suddenly realized that music is fantastic. Really love playing the guitar, I really love listening to music. And that's what brought me to the United States. I initially came to study and just haven't, haven't left ever since. And I find it just an incredibly rich and rewarding lifestyle to, to be a musician, to be able to play music and to, to create things. Also, especially in this time, when we're all um, staying at home, it's allowed me something to do and be creative even without having to leave or without being able to leave my apartment. So next, I'm going to introduce you to my instrument, to the guitar. I'm sure that most of you have probably seen a guitar before and, and probably some of you have even played one or have a friend or a sibling who plays the guitar. And let's not lie about it, the guitar is the best instrument. The guitar is the best instrument. The guitar is the best instrument. <laughs> Uh, what I love the most about the guitar is that we can play so many kinds of music, so many different styles of music on the guitar. We can play, say, rock and roll. Or we could play something, say, some country music. We could play something classical, like... Um, and so it's a really a very versatile instrument. But the specific kind of guitar that I'm playing today is what we call a classical guitar. Uh, also sometimes known as the Spanish guitar or even a nylon string guitar. And what makes it different from, say, an electric guitar, or even just a steel string guitar, is, and I'll hold this a little closer, we have three metal strings here, the bass strings, and three plastic strings. They're made out of uh, nylon. And so actually they're very similar to fishing line, if anybody's ever gone fishing before. And the advantage of having the three nylon strings is being able to play some beautiful sounding melodies. The guitar just has a much more sort of soft and lyrical sound with nylon strings. 
But uh, for those of you who might have played guitar before, you've probably used a guitar pick. And this is what we call a guitar pick or a plectrum. Um, and that's great if we're playing rock and roll. But for classical music, we have to actually grow our fingernails. Can you see that? I grow the fingernails on my right hand long. Left hand keep nice and short, but the right hand long so that I can actually use them to pluck the strings. This is actually, this is a very special guitar. It was made by a guy in the outback of Australia. I went and picked it up from him a few years ago. He lives in uh, middle of nowhere. I flew into Perth, which is on the west side of Australia, and then drove for three days to get to him. But he is one of the world's best guitar makers and living sort of middle of nowhere, away from all the cities and away from, basically away from everybody. Now I'm going to talk to you about two of the most important parts of music, and they are melody and harmony. And they're like so fundamentally important to music. It's like if you're making a sandwich, you need bread and something to go in between two slices of bread. That's how important melody and harmony are to a song. But I thought I would demonstrate what both are. Some of you might know if you've had music lessons before, but if not, I'm gonna play you just some harmony. pretty beautiful but it's maybe not the most interesting thing it really feels like it's missing something doesn't it and the thing that it's missing is the melody and the melody is typically what we sing when we sing a song and so if I was to sing something like a, um, a twinkle twinkle little star how I wonder what you are that is the melody and the melody is also great, but it, if you just sing it, it's still missing something to make it really sound full and, and beautiful. So I'm gonna add the two things together. And I apologize, I should have apologized a little bit earlier, but I'm, I'm a terrible singer. So I'm gonna apologize before singing again, but I'm gonna play the harmony on the guitar and sing Twinkle Twinkle with my voice. So And so if you go and listen to any song you like, I can guarantee you that that song will have a melody. And that's the part that's typically sung, or if it's just an instrumental, it will be the, the uppermost voice, the, the part that you would like to sing. And then the other major part of a song will be the harmony, and that will be the chords. And they can be played on the guitar, they can be played on the piano, they can be played really on any kind of instrument, but it will be the bit that just supports the melody. Another question I've been asked to answer is how I got interested in classical music. So I think I mentioned before that my brother came home from high school when I was about eight years old. He came home from high school playing a guitar. And instantly I was like, wow, that's really cool. I, I love the sound of it. But at that stage, I didn't know that there were all these different styles of music. I didn't know you could play things like... You could play things like that, or... difference between classical music and other styles um, but I was taking classical guitar lessons and and I sort of I did really enjoy the music but then when I was a teenager I just started listening to people like Jimi Hendrix uh, great blues guitarists but also people like Beethoven and Bach and these great classical composers and have just found classical music so rich and rewarding and partly too that there's you know, hundreds of years, as I know Rebecca mentioned, the different periods of classical music. There's hundreds and hundreds of years of music that is all really incredible. And it's written down just in these black dots on a white page. And that we can sit here hundreds of years later, look at it, read it, and play it on our instruments 
and create music that was written such a long time ago. So I love that connection between us and these previous eras. So I've been asked to answer a couple of questions. And the first is, who is my personal hero? And I had to think about that one for a minute, but I would say I have two heroes who are like musical heroes of mine. One is one of the most famous classical musicians who ever lived. If you can name a few classical musicians, you might think of Mozart, Beethoven, Bach. And the last one is, is one of my heroes, Johann Sebastian Bach. He lived like hundreds of years ago. He lived in Germany uh, in a time where they didn't have you know, electricity, they didn't have mobile phones, cell phones, they didn't you know, have cars or any of the cool things that we have today. But he was a brilliant composer and he wrote thousands of compositions and they're just some of the best compositions that have ever been written. He's also a bit of a hero of mine because uh, my wife and I, we have one kid and he's a lot of fun, but he just takes up all of our time looking after him and playing with him and having fun. But Bach fathered 20 children and he did that and was still able to write 2,000 compositions that are brilliant. So that's one of my musical heroes. The other is Jimi Hendrix, the great electric guitar player. Um, he just completely revolutionized what people could do on the guitar. If you've seen him before on YouTube, he could play guitar with his teeth, he could play it behind his head, behind his back. He was an incredible showman but also just this really great player. And he made sounds on the guitar that nobody had ever done before. Um, just fantastic to watch and to listen to. So to conclude, I'm gonna play you a piece. And it's a really great piece by a French composer named Eric Satie. And the title of the piece is Je Te Veux. And the piece is a waltz. And so a waltz is a dance that's going to have three beats in every measure. So you'll hear boom, cha, cha, boom, cha, cha, boom, cha, cha. But it's a really great piece and this is how it goes. You know, it sounds like it's missing something, doesn't it? And what I'm playing sounds very much just like harmony. So I think what we need to do is add some melody to it. Fortunately, I have sitting here my wife, Laura Metcalf, who plays the cello. And so together, we're going to play this piece, Je Te Veux. I'll play the harmony. <laughs> and Laura is going to play the melody. So here we go. This is the Je Te Veux by Eric Satie. Thank you. 